In this lesson, we're going to be looking at searching algorithms and we're looking at the linear search, a way of going through an array and trying to find a particular value that we're looking for. So let's take the scenario here. We've got an array where we've got six values and we want to take this scenario is when we could have duplicate values. There you can see the 45. If we were looking for that 45, we want to go from the start of the array right to the end looking at every single value because we want to find all the possible times that that value occurs in that array. So we'll start with the first value and go, hey, at position, we're going to start at position one and we're going to go right until the end position I size or whatever the end of the array is. So let's look at that first value. Is that a 45? Yes, that is a 45. So therefore we find a match. So we're going to record its position, go, hey, we got it at position one, but we carry on looking because we're looking for duplicate occurrences of that value and might occur more than once so we go to the next value nope that's not a 45 the third value that's not a 45 go to the fourth value that's a match so we then we record its particular value at posi or its position sorry at position four we record it so there we've got two uh, occurrences of the 45 and we carry on looking nope that's not a 45 the last value nope that's not a 45 and now we've reached the end of the array so that's an, that's basically a linear search where you start from one up until the end of the array some sort of for loop but let's take a different scenario let's say we're trying to find a value where we want to find the first occurrence or if we know for a fact that the array won't have duplicates um, so those are the two scenarios so if that's the case then we still want to um, look from the beginning to the end we still want to carry on going through the array um, but for that to occur we want to stop at a particular time when do we want to stop well when we find what we are looking for we must stop it's like my biggest pet peeve is when people say it's always in the last place i looked well obviously it's in the last place you look no one finds something and carries on looking and they go you know it's just in the third last place i looked so in this case when we find what we're looking for we stop looking you don't need to look any further but if we don't find what we're looking for, then the other reason for us to stop is to when we reach the end of the array. There's no point in getting to the end of the array and we carry on looking because there's nothing to look for. So in that case, we must stop looking. So those are two scenarios. So because we've got two potential uh, conditions that need to be met um, when we must stop looking, we're not going to use a for loop in this case. We're going to use a while loop. So let's take the scenario. Let's say we are looking for that 45 again. There's only one occurrence of it in this case. So we're going to... First of all, we're going to create a, a Boolean variable, which is going to indicate whether we have found what we are looking for or if we have not. So that variable, we're going to, we're going to initialize it to false, because obviously we haven't found it at the very beginning. And when we find it, we will set that to true. We're also going to need a looping variable, because we're not using a for loop in this case. We're going to use a while loop. So we're going to have a looping variable, which will initialize to the very first value or position in the array. So position one. Okay, so now we're going to keep on looping. So let's go. We're going to check. Okay, is that a 45? Nope. That 23 is no, definitely not a 45. So let, then we increase the looping variable to a 2 and we go, is that 65 or 45? Nope, that's not a 45. So we increase the looping variable again because that's obviously not a match. We can increase the looping variable. Um, that 32, is that is that a match? Nope, that's not a match. So we're going to increase the looping variable again and we go 45. Is that a match? Wait. 45, 45, that looks like a match. That's a match. Well done. So we found a match. So what do we do when we find a match? Well, first of all, we need to say, hey, we found this. So therefore, the be found Boolean variable, we're going to set it to true um, so that we know, hey, we found a value. And we're also going to record where this, where we found this value. So you could have a, an, another variable that records its position, um, and we're going to set it to whatever the looping variable is at this particular time. In this case, it's a 4. So we want to put that 4 into our pos. Um, you actually don't need to do this step, but I'll explain when we get to the algorithm of a way that we get around it. But you can record the position of where that, uh, where that value is that you found, where the position is, where that 45 is. It's at position 4, so we can go and find it again if we need to. Okay, and so we found it. We, we recorded this position. What do we do next? Well, we, we need to stop because we found what we're looking for. We don't need to carry on any further. We can stop. The loop we don't need to waste our time carrying on looking and that makes this algorithm quite efficient is that the moment we find what we're looking for we can stop looking now let's go back a bit let's go back to before we found the 45 and let's pretend that at this point we weren't looking for 45 we were looking for a 44 so everything would have been the same up until this point and we would have checked hey that is that position four is that a 44 no that's a 45 so that's not a match in the, in this scenario 
So then we increase the looping variable and we go to position 5. Is that a 44? Nope, that's not a 44 either. That's not a match. So then we increase the looping variable to the last value and we check, is that a 44? Nope, that's not a 44 either. So there's no match. So what happens now? Well, we stop. Why? Because we've reached the end of the array. We don't need to look any further. Um, so that's the other scenario that could happen that could make us stop our loop. Okay. And then once we get to the end of our loop, the while loop, the loop is all done, we're going to check that be found variable. If that be found variable is true, that means at some point it changed from false to true. That means it found what we're looking for. Then we do what we need to do in the event that we found the value. Whatever code you want to happen in the event that you found what you're looking for, you run it here. But if that be found variable is false, then that means it went through that entire loop and it never changed to true once, which means that value wasn't in the array, which means you do the not found code. So whatever must happen in the event that you don't find what you're looking for. So let's have a look at the particular pseudo code for this. We're going to get the value that we are looking for. This is what we are looking for. Uh, you call it the U2 val value. For those of you who know U2 songs, still haven't found what I'm looking for. And we're going to initialize be found to false. Um, that's where we initialize. And we're going to initialize our looping variable to one. And now here's where we get our while loop. Our while loop. While we haven't found what we're looking for, while be found is false, and while we haven't reached the end of the array, keep looking. So that's the, con the two conditions. Both of those conditions must be true. The moment one of those conditions is, is uh, not true, then we must stop looking. So once be found is not false, in other words, we found it, then we can stop looking. Or once we've reached the end of the array, we can stop looking. And so what are we doing in this while loop? Well, we're going to check if the at the, the, the looping variable um, position, that position in the array, if that's the same as what we're looking for, then we've found what we're looking for. Then we can set be found to true. Say, hey, we found it. Now, normally I said you can record its position here. You don't have to because what you could do is you could just say else increase the looping variable because the idea behind this is that you are only increasing the looping variable if you are looking for the value. If the moment you found what you're looking for, this loop will stop. So that looping variable will actually remain at the position of the value that you are looking for. So you can just use the looping variable at the end to say, hey, it's at position looping variable. Okay, so that's what we do inside the looping variable. And then we end our while loop. And then right at the end, once the loop is finished, then we can go, hey, if we found what we're looking for, if the be found variable is true, then we can say, hey, it's at position looping variable. And if it's not, well, then we say it wasn't found. So let's go look at this code in Delphi. So yeah, we've got a little program where we display in the names of uh, names array. So I've got a whole array that's got some names in it. So let's just have a look at what it looks like. And we're going to go, okay, let's display it. So there we go. We've got 11 values in this array. And there's a whole bunch of names. Okay, so that's fantastic. So now what, so there you can see names array, boom. And there's a variable called our name size, which tells me, how many values are in that names array. So let's go find a name. Let's say we want to find a particular name. So we're going to go look here. First of all, we're going to try to get the value that we're looking for. I'm using an input box for that. Um, so we can say, hey, enter in the name Brad, please, for example. Then we're going to initialize our, our Boolean variable. There's our be found to false. And our looping variable, we're going to set to 1. Because our, our, our array goes from 1 to whatever the number of elements in the array. If your array goes from 8 onwards, then you must start at position 8, whatever the starting value in your array is, starting position, the lower bound. So here's our loop. While be found is false, while we haven't found what we're looking for, and while, and while we're not at the end of the array, that's how many values are in the array, while we haven't reached that size yet, keep looking. And we are checking this looping variable, we're looking at position 1 in the array. Is that what we're looking for? If it is what we're looking for, then we're going to set be found to true. And yeah, I'm just recording the position of our loop. So, hey, we found it at this position. If it's not what we're looking for, then we just increase it to a 2 and go, hey, is position 2 what we're looking for? Is position 3 what we're looking for? And we keep doing this until we found what we're looking for, which means we set be found to true. Then this will stop. Or we get increase loop to the point where we get to the end of the array, and then this will make it stop. So there is my while loop. Once that while loop has finished doing the loop, it will then jump out of the loop and then it'll come here and go, hey, 
if after all of that looping, if B found is a true, that means it changed from false to true, which means we found what we're looking for. We can say, hey, the value that we're looking for is at position, and you can record our loop. You, can, you don't even need to record our part. You can just say whatever the R loop, because we only increase our loop when we are carry on looking. The moment we find what we're looking for, we stop increasing our loop, and we stop the looping variable, which means wherever our loop stopped being, that would be the position is, or the position of the value that we're looking for. So we can just display our loop. Else, if B found is not a true, then we can say, hey, this is what must happen in the event that we didn't find what we're looking for. Because if B found is false after this entire loop, it means we set it to false and it went through every single value and never changed to true, which means the value that we're looking for does not occur in the array. So that's this is the code that you run at the end of your while loop. So let's run to see if it works. So let's run, wait for it to compile. Here we go, it's gonna come, it's gonna come. There we go. So let's have a look. So let's display the values. So I'm going to look, if I click on find a name, I'm looking for the name Brad. We can see that Brad does exist in the array. It exists at position six. Let's see if it tells me it's at position six. So I'm going to OK. Yes, Brad was found at position six. There we go. So I can click OK. But now if I find the name, let's say I want to type in the name Brad Lee. That name doesn't exist. Let me go OK. But hey, Bradley is not in the array. Okay, so there we go. If I wanted to find values that occurred, um, even partial values, then we could use the pos function from our string handling. If the position of what we're looking for is in some way inside the loop, then we can uh, say, yes, that's it's there. Okay, but that's another type of scenario. So there we go. So there is our linear search where we start from the first value and we go until the end of the array looking for what we're looking for. The moment we find what we're looking for, we stop looking for. Now this, just a reminder, this search algorithm works both if the array is sorted and if it's unsorted. So this is your, your, your go-to search if you want to search for something. This will work no matter what type of array it is. So use this linear search when you are looking for something. For other videos in this uh, series on arrays, as well as other videos on IT-related stuff and Delphi stuff, please go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, follow us on Facebook, and remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.